Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number, and in today's Tableau video, what I want to cover is how to pop a filter or a parameter on and off a dashboard. Um, so let me start by showing you what I mean by that. Um, so, so for some background of this video, um, we did a video in late January 2022 about how to set up a custom date filter using a parameter that would allow a dashboard, you know, the, the date range to change based on the user selection. So you can see here, I've got a filter, which is, you know, year to date, previous year to date, month to date, things like that. Um, I've got a whole bunch of filters here, actually. Uh, but in this case, the one filter that I really want to hone in on is just this section here, date filter. So I've got a bunch of pre selected values from my user, they could say, Hey, what's happening with sales year to date? What's happening with sales last month? But I also want to give them the flexibility to set their own custom range. So they can select custom. And then once they've selected custom, these options down here for the custom range become eligible, right? Previously changing those does nothing. If I have previous month selected, it doesn't matter what I select on these start and end date parameters. Um, and just for a quick backdrop on what's happening there. So I've got this date filter parameter and it's got these options, the pre-coded stuff like year to date, previous year, and then I've got an option for custom. And then just to give you again, a quick backdrop on what's happening there, when you get to the custom option, then that's where you would say the date needs to be greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date. So the only times the start and end date parameters are in play is when the parameter is set to seven or custom. Uh, quick side note, I will drop a link in the description uh, or in the uh, text below to where you can download this workbook. So if you need to pick this apart or do some of your own testing against it, you will have freedom to do that. Um, okay. So back to the matter at hand here, my ideal state for this situation would be that these start and end date options only show up for the user um, once they've selected custom. It would be awesome if they could sort of appear and disappear, uh, or they basically would disappear when any of the other date filter options is selected. So I've done a lot of experimentation with this. I've tried to float objects over it that block them from view. The problem is you can't just float something over these objects. Once you float something, like I just floated a blank object here, whatever is behind that floating object is inaccessible and unselectable, if that's a word. Uh, so what I need to do is a little bit different. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna create a worksheet that appears or disappears based on my user selection, okay? So I'm gonna call this my pop worksheet, okay? So how the pop worksheet works is I'll create a calculated field. I'll call this my pop field and it will be set up like this. I will say, um, if the date filter parameter is set to seven or custom, then it should be a null value. Otherwise, it should be returning a blank. Okay, if date filter equals seven, then null, else blank, or just back-to-back -back quotes, end. So I'm going to put the pop field on rows. I'm going to put the pop field on text. Um, I'm going to put the pop field. Oh, actually, let me double check what my parameter is set to right now. Show parameter. Yeah, let me think about how I want to set this up. I might need to do a little bit of testing here. I do want the pop field on filters. The only thing I can't remember is... Yes. Okay. I did it right. So let me just backtrack real quick. So I want to have something select in the date filter. That's not my custom. So let's say year to date. I take a copy of the pop field to my filters card, and I'm just going to select it when there is a blank there. Um, if it was null, it would actually say null right here. So what happens is you can see there's actually I mean, this is a bunch of blanks and stuff, but there are some texts and objects and things like that here. But once I set it to custom, it's gone. Like there's nothing in here except for the title. And if I edit the filter, I'll see that null is unselected. That's good. Don't touch that. Leave that. Null should be unselected. So flipping it back to one of these options like year to date, this is the part of the worksheet that's going to appear or disappear. And, and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to set it up so that when it appears, it shoves the start and the end date 
off of my screen. So these are gonna get moved over here uh, when that worksheet appears. And then when that worksheet disappears, they're gonna jump back into place. So I just need to do a little bit of, well, let me, let me leave it as is for now. I'm gonna leave those lines there. Um, we are gonna get rid of those eventually, but just for the sake of showing you that the worksheet's there, I'm gonna leave them. So I've hidden the field labels. I'm gonna deselect show tooltips, and I've just got this kind of weird blank sheet with some row dividers. Now I'm gonna bring a horizontal layout container into the mix. Not only that, I'm gonna float it. So I have floated this container, and there's three main things that are gonna go in this container. The first and what should be on the left side is my pop worksheet. So I'm gonna tile the pop worksheet and put it in the container hide the title. I'm going to put the start date parameter to the right of the pop worksheet, at least if it will let me. It looks like it's not being very nice to me right now. Uh, it went in the wrong order, but that's okay. I'll, I'll rearrange this at the end. There's my end date. If you are trying to grab the outline of the layout container, it won't let you. Click in the background of an object, double click on the handle, drag it back where you want it. So we're gonna get this pop worksheet back to the beginning. And there's a few kind of big things that we need to do with the pop worksheet. So I need to set the fit to entire view. So I hit the fit selector on the dropdown uh, of my dashboard once I've got the pop worksheet selected, go to entire view. I wanna make sure that the width of the start and the end date that, um, objects are, uh, What's, what's the word I'm thinking of? I, I guess I don't want them to be dynamic. So if I hit the drop down and say, oh, fix width, that's what I want. Hit the drop down, fix width. It's actually the same as hitting this pin right here. And then I'm gonna actually edit the width. I probably wanna make them a little bit smaller, I would guess. Um, I'll try 100 and just kind of see how that sits with me. Click on the my kind of pop object again. Um, I think I'm gonna need to make this entire container bigger. So basically, I gotta be careful not to drop it entirely off the sheet, but what we wanna have happen is this thing. Gosh, it's a, it's a little tricky to get this all just, oh God, I grabbed the wrong thing. It's a little tricky from a formatting perspective to get this all exactly the way that you want it, but I'll probably get it pretty close in this video and then maybe leave it at that point. Um, so this pop worksheet, so, so check this out first of all, it's already going to be doing most of what we want. When year to date selected, this white sheet shoves these parameters off the side. And then when I set it to custom, it goes away and these parameters pop back into place. I'm going to edit the width just a little more, and then I'm probably going to stop tinkering with this. I'm just going to try and bring them down to just like 97. And the reason I do that is I want them to sit nicely within the lines of the uh, filters box that I've made. So year to date, select that, boom, they pop back out, right? Um, I don't really want this worksheet to have a white background like that. I want it to be transparent. So I'm going to right click and format the worksheet. I'm going to go to my, uh, whatever you'd call this, the paint can and set the worksheet background to none. I'm going to go to my borders uh, or uh, rather that's borders, the second to last icon and set row dividers to none. And so we're actually extremely close to where we want to be. Um, again, custom brings it back into play. Year to date pushes it off. The last thing is that I'm going to go into presentation mode for this dashboard for a second. Um, it still shows up there like off the side of the screen. So that's not ideal, right? Like that's cool that it's popping on and off the screen, but if that's all that it does, what is the point of that? So the last thing we need to do is we're gonna float a blank object off the edge of the screen that's gonna keep our user from seeing this at all. So I'm gonna get my blank object and float it. And then basically it just needs to float in such a manner that my user can't see any of it. So just kind of get it over the top of all that stuff. And then I do not want I, or I should say this, I want the background of the blank to be solid. So I click on the background of the blank, go to layout, and set the background to white. So this looks odd. Um, actually, I forgot about this custom range thing here. 
<laughs> I need to probably delete that, but then I need to shift everything else up to accommodate that. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a little bit off. Let's see. Let's set it to custom and see where it shows up. It actually seems to be doing okay. So in reality, I probably would want to move everything up a little bit, but since it's all working, I'm just going to leave it as is. So yeah, the cool part here is that my user is only going to see these when custom is selected and they're not going to see them when custom is not selected. Um, so let me go into my presentation mode one more time. You can see here, I actually need to extend the width of the blank a little bit. And I, do, I should just say this, this entire setup that I'm doing right now is going to work best with a fixed size dashboard. So you can see my dashboard is a 1000 tall by 700 wide. That's probably the best case scenario. If your dashboard is dynamic, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Um, but here in layout, instead of the width of this blank being 172, let me just throw it all the way up to 200. I don't really care how wide it is. It just needs to be wide enough so that my user, you know, wouldn't see anything funny here. And I do realize that I'm seeing this like white object. So I could first of all, turn it to gray, or I believe on Tableau server, the background is naturally white unless you override that default. So that may be best to leave the background as white. Um, but you can see here, I just changed it to the matching gray for the background of my dashboard. And it's uh, once again, blocking it. So this is a really cool trick. Um, yeah, obviously it's not for every dashboard, but I think that this can be really helpful for situations where, you know, there's only a certain scenario in which you'd want the user to have access to a specific filter or a specific parameter. And you can use this trick of creating a pop worksheet, which has got a filterable field. Um, and basically this, the worksheet disappears or there's no values that show up when custom or I'm sorry, when anything but custom is selected. So when I've got year to date selected, the worksheet basically shows up, but when custom is selected, there's nothing to show and it collapses these back into the area where I want them. So I know this is kind of fast, feel free to revisit. I'm gonna drop a link to the finalized dashboard in the description. So if you wanna check this out on Tableau Public, download it and try and recreate it for yourself. Uh, then you can. And if you have questions or if you need help creating this, let me know. I'm happy to kind of follow up with comments or and you can even book me on something like an office hour um, so we can set this up for your own dashboard. So thanks for checking out the One Number YouTube channel. We appreciate the support um, and we look forward to catching you here on another video next week.